Hi, everybody. Are you ready for our next chapter of Charlotte's Web? This is chapter eight, A Talk at Home. We'll read the whole chapter today. It's a short one. On Sunday morning, Mr. and Mrs. Arable and Fern were sitting at breakfast in the kitchen. Avery had finished and was upstairs looking for a slingshot. Did you know that Uncle Homer's goslings had hatched, asked Fern? How many, asked Mr. Arable. Seven, replied Fern. There were eight eggs, but one egg didn't hatch, and the goose told Templeton she didn't want it anymore, and so he took it away. The goose did what, said Mrs. Arable, gazing at her daughter with a strange, worried look told Templeton that he didn't that she didn't want the egg anymore repeated Fern who's Templeton asked Mrs. Arable he's the rat replied Fern none of us like him much who's us asked Mr. Arable oh everybody in the barn cellar Wilbur and the sheep and the lambs and the goose and the gander and the goslings and Charlotte and me Charlotte said Mrs. Arable who's Charlotte she's Wilbur's best friend she's terribly clever what does she look like, asked Mrs. Arable. Well, said Fern thoughtfully, she has eight legs. All spiders do, I guess. Charlotte is a spider, asked Fern's mother. Fern nodded, a big gray one. She has a web across the top of Wilbur's doorway. She catches flies and sucks their blood. Wilbur adores her. Does he really, asked Mrs. Arable rather vaguely. She was staring at Fern with a worried expression on her face. Usually it's Louie that runs away, not Sophie. Oh yes, Wilbur adores Charlotte, said Fern. Do you know what Charlotte said when the goslings hatched? I haven't the faintest idea, said Mr. Arable. Tell us. Well, when the first gosling stuck its little head out from under the goose, I was sitting on my stool in the corner and Charlotte was on her web. She made a speech. She said, I am sure that everyone has Every one of us here in the barn cellar will be gratified to learn that after four weeks of unremitting effort and patience on the part of the goose, she now has something to show for it. Don't you think that was a pleasant thing for her to say? Yes, I do, said Mrs. Arable. And now, Fern, it's time to get ready for Sunday school and tell Avery to get ready. And this afternoon, you can tell me more about what goes on at Uncle Homer's barn. Aren't you spending quite a bit of time there? You go there almost every afternoon, don't you? I like it there, said Fern. She wiped her mouth and ran upstairs. After she had left the room, Mrs. Arable spoke in a low voice to her husband. I worry about Fern, she said. Did you hear the way she rambled on about animals pretending that they talked? Mr. Arable chuckled. Maybe they do talk, he said. So I've sometimes wondered. At any rate, don't worry about Fern. She's just got a lively imagination. Kids think they hear all sorts of things. Just the same, I do worry about her, replied Mrs. Arable. I think I shall ask Dr. Dorian about her the next time I see him. He loves Fern almost as much as we do, and I want him to know how strangely she's acting about that pig and everything. I don't think it's normal. You know perfectly well animals don't talk. Mr. Arable grinned. Maybe our ears aren't as sharp as Fern's, he said. And that's the end of the chapter. The next chapter is called Wilbur's Boast. Have a wonderful day.